baby. We got it started. Let's go. Let's do this. It's a Monday and it feels right. Yeah. Three, two, one. Yo, what's going on, Arkansas Razorback fans? We got the wrong background. Some shocker. There we go. There's the right background. There it is. You might notice something new. We got something new for you. Well, we got we got we got a couple of things before we get started. Shout out to our brand new sponsor, baby. Insurance Max, baby. They got you covered. Excited to have them on board. We just uh, we just kind of got this thing going literally this afternoon. But uh, their website is provided for you down below in the description box. I do not have an official ad read just yet, but I wanted to go ahead since we we kind of finalized some things today. Wanted to go ahead and give them a major shout out. So please go check out their link. It's provided for you again down below in the description box. So shout out to Insurance Max, the newest sponsor to Tusk Talk with Ty. They have their own Patreon, or excuse me, not Patreon. They have their own link in our discord they have their own site in our discord if you go if you open up tusk talk discord it's on the very top left where you see sponsors that's been moved up now to the top part of the sponsor or to the top part of the discord page and you'll see it right there insurance max they have their link they've got some information there for you uh, they offer business insurance personal insurance life and health insurance retirement sounds like they've got it all so why not check them out and again a special shout out and a welcome to the Tusk Talk with Ty family. Also, alongside the OGs, direct service overhead, the garage door company. They operate out of central Arkansas and in northwest Arkansas. They offer same-day services, quality parts, affordable outcomes, free estimates, free estimates, hundreds of five-star reviews, better than best results. Give them a call today at 501-244-3667. All right, shout out to the sponsors, Patreon supporters. You guys all together help make this thing possible. So I appreciate each and every one of you. $5 super chat. <laughs> <for the laughs> you know, <laughs> T-Dub's doing them dirty. For the put in Criswell crowd. SP, uh, SP did into the portal. So there's the $5 <laughs> super chat. Oh, you're wrong for that one, T-Dub. Listen, uh, we, we're, we're going to get to that. We're going to talk about Criswell and some other players, kind of what to look for in the portal. What does this do for Arkansas in the transfer portal? What does this mean uh, going forward, right? Yeah, Arkansas gets the big man, Big Z from Croatia. Big, big get. Not really shocking. And his name is so freaking hard to pronounce. It's Vanimir... I wish it. I, I, well, that sounded bad. I visic. I can't pronounce his last name. And what's funny is I've actually watched his highlights and they say his name. And for whatever reason, when I try to just say it, it just doesn't come out right. I mean, we're just going to call him Big Z. Zvonimir Vishits. Vishits. It's tough, man. Seven foot two, 235 pound center. He's from Croatia. Something that some people get a little mixed up on with him, they don't realize when they look at his minutes played, they look at his total, like what he did, and they're like, what's going on? You'd think he'd be a little bit – I mean, this is a typical Cal – this is a typical Coach Cal kind of big, right? This guy that's pretty athletic, can move well, can also shoot outside. What What's going on? He wasn't cleared. He wasn't deemed eligible until January 20th. So just keep that in mind. This is not someone who came right out the gate who was ready to go by November – you know, and you think about what that means, like what they were doing in practice and how that was going about. Like, he probably wasn't getting a lot of reps with the ones. You know, I mean, it takes time to get these guys kind of moved into position. And then you got to create chemistry, in, in-game in chemistry, which is different than in-practice chemistry. But it starts in practice, no doubt. So, now he's your first. How about that? A guy who got 11 minutes a game, a player that got 11 minutes a game, is the first domino to fall from Kentucky to Arkansas. Isn't that pretty cool? I think that's pretty neat. A guy who Kentucky fans are all in on. They're all in. I guarantee you they're not super thrilled. They're also not shocked that he's gone. But uh, 
you know, they're not thrilled. I'm sure some of them wish that he would have stayed. I mean, there's you, come on, let's be real. The dude's got a very, very high ceiling. You can go watch some of his highlights. He's really fun to watch. This all kind of broke. This story broke. Uh, like as I was filling out, like this video, this whole live stream was going to be about the transfer portal and Jacoby Criswell and, you know, some other stuff. And that was really it in baseball. And then we had this just kind of thrown at us at the last second, all while also trying to get the new, the new sponsorship logos up and, and to get all that situated. So yeah, this kind of, I mean, it's, it's a pleasant surprise. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm upset by it by any stretch of the imagination. Let's read chat here for just a second. Uh, and again, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Uh, Dark, it's all stealing coaches and taking players, says Boss Hog. <laughs> Doesn't it feel good to be the villains? I mean, some fans, some opposing fans absolutely hate Coach Muss. There was always that, right? There was always that part of it. Uh, there was that dislike of Muss, you know, all the nicknames these other teams would give him, how often Arkansas fouls, the technicals that Muss would get, you know, uh, sometimes get thrown out of a game. There was already kind of a hint of being a villain on top of being really good in March and advancing, but you weren't really winning in the regular season the way that uh, Coach Cal is obviously like what Coach Cal was do doing at Kentucky. Oh, and by the way, you take his coach, and now you take you're going to take some of their players in the first domino. I mean, here it is. It's a big one, right? Yeah, boss hog. I agree, man. It's fun. Congratulations, Ty, on the new sponsorship pickup. That's a major 100. Absolutely, we are very happy to have them on board. Insurance Max. I'm going to share their uh, their link. If it'll let me, good Lord. Well, it's not going to. It's it's being stubborn. I uh, I wasn't expecting this one today. Oh, well, not this late in the day. I kind of thought we'd hear something about that earlier today. And you know how it goes. The longer the day stretches out, you're not so sure really what to expect. Here is uh, Insurance Max. That's their link. Go check them out. SLR, what's going on, man? It's good to have you in here. It's good to have you in here, man. Wes Brown, that is Wes Brown of Insurance Max right there. Thanks, Ty. Great meeting you this weekend. Yeah, I met Wes along with the uh, the rest of the Woo Pig guys at Walk-Ons. I think we've talked about that over the weekend. Had a lot of fun, man. That was a crazy 24 hours. Arky 56, so that is Pops. That's my dad who is constantly confused by new things that show up on the screen. So <laughs> what is that? Come over here and help me fix it, Dad or Ty. Yeah, it's it's click on the link there, Dad. Click the link; it'll show you. It's right there in front of you. Um, so yeah, Arkansas gets Big Z. All insurance is Arky. There you go. He's there to answer your questions. He's right there. And sunburnt. Yeah, you guys got sunburnt because you Matt because you guys hung out down in the in the sunlight the whole time. I was up in the shade. I'm too fat, man. I don't want to. I don't want to be fat and sunburnt. Arkansas entering their villain era. Says Patrick Wendell, aka Pwindle, or, or no, he goes by uh, Hog Pat now in Discord. We should do wheel spins for the new sponsor and 1,000th video. This is in fact the 1,000th video. I'm not gonna lie to you. I hadn't even realized that until my administrator in Discord mentioned it. Didn't know. I was like, oh man, wow, 1,000 videos. That's crazy. Because I really didn't get truly started completely invested into into what was once pig trail network which eventually became tusk talk with ty until like 20 20 2021 and like when i really put the time and energy and went back to being a, a solo act whatever you want to call it solo person so it's kind of crazy to think how much more content we've been pumping out the sponsors that we've had, the Patreon supporters that we've grown. It's just incredible. You guys have, have all helped it. Uh, you guys are all part of this. This isn't just me. You guys liking and sharing and subscribing. Uh, Sports Sports Live Reactions says those Arkansas games next season are going to be interesting. It's going to be very fascinating next season. Arkansas, It's it, first off, it's all ready. We're still trying to, we're still trying to get used to seeing Coach Cal in a red – Red anything. I don't care if it's a jacket, anything with a hog or the color red on, it's going to take some getting used to, for sure. 
absolutely uh, just crazy. Who would have thought, man? Who would have thought, even at the end of this season, when we were all like, okay, maybe there's a chance Musk leaves, who would have thought in their right mind that the guy to replace him would be the current head coach of Kentucky? A rival, by the way, was a, was a really, really good rivalry back in the 90s. I think we kind of we kind of came back to that, especially with Musselman's success inside Rupp. So uh, new videos will either be pre-Cal or post-Cal. Yeah. I cannot wait for Arkansas versus Kentucky. That is – that's – I don't know that – it's going to have – I'm not going to say it's going to have that – you know, when Duke came to Fayetteville – I'm not going to say it's going to have that kind of feeling to it because obviously Duke's never been to Bud Walton Arena. We know about the history between Arkansas and Duke and what happened in the championship game, Grant Hill, blah, blah, blah. Uh, We know kind of what happened there. But, like, that was such a big moment. Still my favorite Hogs Plus video. I might be biased because they – you know, they use your boy's voice, but uh, whatever. But that was a really good video to watch. If you haven't watched that, it's actually still worth another watch despite how the season unfolded. That was awesome, right? This is different because it it's stoking the fires of, a, of, of rekindling a rivalry that's always kind of been there, but now it's it's turned. Let's not sit here and pretend like if you're a Kentucky fan, let's not sit here and pretend like you're not a little bit peed off that your guy went to Arkansas. Don't I don't care about these screenshots about Rupp Arena and you introducing your your head coach. Good luck to that guy who's got all the pressure in the world. Congrats, you got your guy. You guys are you're stoked about this hire, although I'm not going to lie to you. I, I do like his brand of basketball, that five out. It's actually pretty fun to watch, but not a lot of March success with this guy. Cal leaving was supposed to be on their terms. Cal leaving Kentucky was supposed to be on Kentucky terms, not Coach Cal terms. And look how this has unfolded. And now you're taking their players. So don't sit here and tell me this hasn't rekindled a rivalry because it absolutely has. I think it was always there, and I think it died off, especially under, you know, under uh, Stan Heath and and um, Pelfrey, Mike Anderson. It kind of came back. You had the you had the slam at the at the end of the uh, at the end of regulation there, and the 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 Qualls dunk at the end of the game that was great. Kind of felt like that might help with the rivalry situation, but then it still just kind of was never a big deal. I don't know, and then you know. You see the success that Musselman has, especially his first, you know, two, three years on campus, even during the regular season, went to Rupp Arena, beat Kentucky inside Rupp. But this is a whole different level of rivalry. And again, you're taking a big piece. Now, I know nobody's shocked by this. He's been following Arkansas people or whatever on on, on Instagram and on Twitter. So this isn't a huge shock to everybody, uh, but it is – you know, deep down, it, it pisses them off just a little bit, and I'm here for it. What can I say? I'm here for it. And, uh, yeah, it's going to make Arkansas versus Kentucky. It's going to feel legit. Um, yep, just just did yard work, having a cold one. Oh, a cold beer sounds so good right now. I am, I'm thirsting. I'm thirsting, man. Uh, 7'2", Big Z, that's right. 7'2", 235 pounds. He's from Croatia. Um, his numbers, if we're going to look at it again, he got about 11, almost 12 minutes a game. He shot about 58% from the floor, 38% against, uh, or 38% outside shooting average, just three rebounds, one block, five and a half, about six points. But again, was not cleared until the, until, uh, what was it? January 20th, January 20th. So you're talking about no November, no December and towards the end of the month of January. That matters. But it's nice to have a 7 foot 2 235 pound athlete. Again, go watch his highlights. It's uh it's a lot of fun. Uh What politics? I don't know what you're talking about with politics. Um bu- 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 let other teams court storm if they could beat the Hogs on the road, says Jeffrey Goodrich. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, when's the last time we had a good seven-footer, right? I mean, 
if if he could be a space taker, if he can attack the boards, if he can – I mean, you know, he's had a couple of games. If you go back and look at his stat sheet, his best game was against Alabama when Kentucky won 117-95. to uh, He was 7 for 11, 64% from the floor, one of three outside. He was he was perfect at the free throw line, three for three, five boards, eighteen points. Uh, but apparently, one of the knocks on him is that he does get into foul trouble pretty quickly. Uh, he had he got in a little bit of foul trouble against Vanderbilt in the game that Kentucky won. I don't think yeah he ended up getting about seventeen minutes of that game. He goes three of seven. He ended up with six points, one turnover, uh, and three fouls. I only see two games out of the out of, of what, what he played. Where he got into some serious trouble. He did foul out again against Vanderbilt. I shouldn't say again. He got into foul trouble again and then fouled out against Vanderbilt. And that's a game where he had 11 points and seven, re- uh, seven rebounds. No double doubles on the year for him, but he did have nine boards against Arkansas and 12 points. So I, I think, you know, this is a guy too who's a, tr- who's a, a freshman, really good player. Uh, from the looks of it, this kid looks like he may turn into the best center Arkansas's had for a long while, maybe ever, says uh, Callan Hitchens, 87. I don't know how this doesn't excite you. I mean, this was a guy, again, it was such a big deal for Kentucky to get him. Now, I don't know if Cal – I don't know if when Cal got him, if it was just an issue when he was cleared by January 20th, a game that – you know, he opened up against Georgia where he had 13 points, right? He goes three of four shooting outside with 16 minutes of play. 16 minutes of play, he had 13 points, five boards, two assists, three blocks, two steals, and just one foul and two turnovers. He doesn't look like he's real turnover heavy. In fact, he has several games where he has zero turnovers or one or fewer turnovers. I But I don't know why he didn't, why his minutes didn't increase, right? Like you would expect from January 20th and on, that would be a really good conversation to have Blake Lovell on for, and I'm going to reach out to him this week. We've been talking a little bit in the DMs. I'm going to reach out to him this week, get him on, see what he thinks about this. I'm, I'm hoping by the time we bring him on, we're going to have some more transfers. We're going to have some more spots filled up on Cal's roster. What's he got, 13 spots open? Well, now 12. It's the first domino to fall, baby. But, yeah, I don't know. He goes from 16 minutes to 10 minutes, down to two, down, uh, up, back up to six, back up to 12, back down to 11, one, three. And then he, he goes up 20, 21, 20, and then it goes back down 17, eight. And then uh, looks like this uh, 16 minutes in his last game. But he does produce. I mean, every game he plays in, just about, I shouldn't say every game, just about he does, he's getting some production. Remember, not cleared till January 20th, and this was a freshman. This was a freshman, so just keep that in mind. Uh, this kid is impressive. I agree. Big Z had a career game against Bama. Yeah, he had a he had a great game against Alabama. He had a great game: eighteen points, four blocks in a single game, five boards, two. Uh, let's see, just two turnover or no, one turnover, one or two fouls. He was three for three at the line. He was one of three outside. He can shoot outside. He could stretch the floor out just a little bit. It could have been a matchup thing. That very well could have been it. But someone like that, you'd think, would still climb minutes no matter no matter who the opponents have on the floor, you know. Um, but yeah, it does sound like it might have been a matchup thing. And and then you maybe you, then you're transitioning him to being a full, you know, thirty five or thirty four minute player. I say full, but you know, 30 plus minutes kind of player. Maybe that's, or maybe that's just not who he is. Maybe he's a guy who's going to be a 25 minute, 20 to 25 minute player. I I don't know, but I think this is a big piece. Really uh, nice to have him on board. Jaden Quintaint is another center, another big for them who decommitted. 6'9", 230. We know Carter Knox decommitted. Uh, 6'5", 225 pound forward. Boogie Flan today decommitted from Kentucky, the point guard, the big time top three point guard in the country, and also uh, Samto Cyril, 6'10, 240 pound, four star center. So they've got some size Kentucky's going to have to make up for. I don't know about you guys, but I think they would look awfully sharp in, uh, in the red and white. 
I'm just saying. So that's what Kentucky's looking at right now. Let's read some more chat here. Uh, he's better than he's better than uh, than the big must brought in. Says little Joker. Long Shanks. Tremont Mark wanted to go back home. All there. Yeah, he's back to Texas. I kind of wonder what his role is going to be like at, at UT. I wonder what that's going to look like for him. Uh, yeah, it's hard to blame. It's hard to blame him going back. And if someone like Texas is going to take you back, I mean, yeah, of course. Or I say take you back. If someone like Texas is going to take you, and you're back home, why not? Yeah, thoughts on Tremont Mark. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a little bit surprised he did get accepted at Texas. I kind of thought he would end up. Just name any other school besides Houston and, and Texas. I, I wouldn't have been shocked to see him with A&M, with Texas Tech, you know, uh, maybe a smaller school, maybe in North Texas. Uh, hey, don't hate on Bayfall. Come on, Charles. Don't hate on Bayfall. Make sure you guys uh, like, share, subscribe if you're new. One point. What are we at? 1.4 million total views on this channel. Man, oh man, that's uh, not easy to do when you're following just one team. You're not connected to any major websites. You don't have some big financial backer. You're not hiring big time writers. For, it's just me, little old me, baby, and you guys who help make this possible. I appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you for being here and supporting Tusk Talk with Ty, formerly known as Pig Trail Network. Got to play good fundamental b-ball if you want to, if you want minutes with Coach Cal, says Moobly501. Um, Cameron, I'm going to time you out for that comment. Why do you got to rub in? Why do you got to do that? Why do you got to rub salt on the wound like that, huh? <laughs> that's just, that's just cold-blooded. Uh, he potentially has talent, but from what I saw, he was the worst McDonald's All-American I've ever seen, says Charles O'Kelly. Ooh, I don't know about that one. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, who are you talking about, Charles? Be clear. Who are you talking about? Hey, we finally going to have a team and not just a group of guys, says Steven 1383. That would be the nice thing that comes with this, right? You're getting some guys that already have camaraderie. If you could pluck some more of these guys from, from Kentucky, you're going to have – I don't know how many they end up with, but let's say it's three – Three players, maybe, maybe more. There's going to be a little bit of camaraderie built between those three, and you can hope that, that maybe the outside chemistry you know, or the outside, the guys that come in from the portal can, uh, can I don't know, can come be a part of it. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. You should be hard, proud of yourself, bro. Hard, hard to do without big backers. Thank you, Wes. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got to be pretty well connected. You get you get you get people that have um, big big financial backers. You can go out and grab some some great writers and uh, and just kind of form formulate a show around that. You never know. Hey, you never know, right? Remember, remember that means we play him and Texas next season. Says Philip White. Something to consider, right? All right, moving on. Arkansas baseball, really quick. We're going to knock this out because it's 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 tough to swallow, but Arkansas goes on the road. They lose. Hitting is a problem. I'm saying something that anybody in here that's paying attention to Arkansas baseball, you're going, yeah, we know. Uh, hitting is bad. Hitting at Arkansas is really bad. Game one, just six total hits, five runs. Game two, six total hits. Not a not a great – these just aren't good numbers. And then the third and final game. And by the way, that second game had extra innings. Third game, four hits. What is that, 16 hits? <laughs> that's, uh, that's bad. That's not good. Not that Alabama can't pitch. They have, they have some pretty good – they had a freshman ripping Arkansas to shreds game three. Um, I mean, but you got a lot of 0 for 4s. 0 for 4s, 0 for 3s, 
one for five, or two for five, excuse me, Stovall got some hits in game two. Things are so bad hitting. 155th in the country. Team batting average. 155th. That's that's a batting a team batting average of 276. That's not gonna win. Guys, I'll just tell you right now, I realize they're playing SEC ball. There's there's two seasons to college baseball. I've said this for years. There's regular season, then there's just postseason ball. And if you get hot at the right time, some of this doesn't matter. It just doesn't. Like sometimes the bats just warm up in the month of May and into June. And all of a sudden, nobody can pitch to you. And, and, and the other way around as well, your bullpen. These guys are just hitting their spots. They're hitting the zone. You know, it's, it, you know they're, they're playing good infield. They're making plays. They're stealing bases. They're, they're, they're getting runners in scoring position, good old risp, and they're scoring. But right now, that's not what's happening. They're not. They're they're one of the worst hitting teams, batting average teams in the SEC. It's not going to get you far in the regular season. Now, I will say, I agree. I kind of like that they're they've dropped back. I think everyone put them back at two. I would argue that they are a legit top five team in the country. I just don't know where. Um, just based on what little reading I've done around college baseball and what I've listened to here and there and what other people are saying, you just kind of take it all in. I, I think they are probably a legit top five, top three team. Their pitching is the best, right? I mean, ERA is, I think it's still ranked number. It's top two, top three in the country at the very least. But the batting is atrocious. Now, to be fair, Alabama's good. Alabama, you're a ranked, ranked SEC clubs. You never overlook, right? And not that Arkansas did. I know there's some fans that are raging about this. They're not super thrilled. Ah, see, we knew it. They're overrated. No, they're just they're, they just went cold at the plate, and Bama's you know they're at home. Hell, it took them it took them extra innings to beat you in game two, right? And, and that's why Arkansas didn't slide very far back. I don't. I think the lowest was it Baseball America that put them at third. Somebody put them at third. Wasn't D one? D one has them at two. I'm pretty sure. So. The bats have got to get hot, and they got to get hot at the right time. And this team has got to find itself offensively. That means moving runners and when, when not leaving so many damn players stranded. It takes all of this, right, to to get to to catch fire. Everyone get on the same damn page. I've said all along. I thought their base running was sus. Like it's it's just strange. Sometimes I, I wonder if they even work on it. You know. Uh, it's, it, I, you don't see a lot of, I, I just don't ever feel certain, even when they have runners in scoring positions, even when they have a guy on third or second, nothing really feels certain unless there's a couple guys in that lineup. You do feel pretty good about when they step up to the plate. Yeah. They got to get that fixed. Um, and I think they, I say fixed, they just got to find that spot. They got to find that sweet spot and heat up a little bit. Um, not raging, but definitely surprised that a freshman pitcher lit us up like that. Well, he did. I'm so sick of this little brother syndrome that causes us to lose to Bama in almost every sport. <laughs> it is it is infuriating. And I, I've said, you know, I don't like that they're better than Arkansas is currently in basketball. I don't know how long that lasts. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's not like Nate Oates hasn't beaten Cal at Kentucky. Um but it's it it sucks that they have found all three sports now. Maybe football takes a dive. This new uh, this new guy he's he's got some ginormous shoes to fill with Saban out. But I mean, the worst case scenario it could be anything. Who knows? With year one with a new head coach, but the expectations are that's a ten or eleven win team. Meanwhile, in football, Arkansas is going to be you know we're going to be thrilled if they make a bowl game. They beat you. They take two out of three against you in baseball. They've surpassed you in basketball. Yeah, I mean, Bama, you you didn't always say that about Alabama. Like, oh, they're clearly better than Arkansas in everything of the three big sports. I don't know that you've said that very often since Dave Van Horn has been here. And yet you feel like – and it's not to say that they're ahead of Arkansas. Let's just be real. I feel like if this thing was in bomb, yeah, I think Arkansas takes two out of three. Um, I picked Arkansas to sweep this weekend. Um First time all year I picked him to sweep anybody, by the way. So I don't know that I'll be doing that again. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't. I shouldn't say that Bama. Bama hasn't surpassed Arkansas in baseball. Let's not. Let's not go that far. But they did take two out of three, and their fans will certainly tell you that they have because they're Alabama. Of course they are, right? They're they're God's gift to college athletics. <laughs> DVH super conservative with base runners. I can't say that I disagree with that. Uh, Count says cope with Pope. Cope with Pope, he says. And you fans, but I'm going to try. C-A-T-S! Cats! Cats! Oh, no! Bingo! <laughs> oh, cope with Pope, baby. That's what it's all about right there. Cope with Pope. You guys just hired Chad Morris. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Pope would have considered... Uh, <laughs> Pope would have considered the assistant job at Kentucky if it were offered. Bama not that good. Hawks forgot their bats and they got exposed. <laughs> Uh, my eyes are burning. <laughs> I've shown that several times. You guys, some of you have missed some lives. You've, you've missed out on those. We're, we're just going to call it the cope with Pope, the cope with Pope video. He did this from the uh, Cougars gym. How is any player supposed to believe him? I don't know. So I guess that was last year. I had a Kentucky fan come through and tell me that was from last year. <laughs> I've seen them all, but it still burns. <laughs> uh so getting back to baseball really quick yeah let's hope they get hot when it matters let's hope they find it in may and june at the plate i think pitching should be fine knock on wood i, I mean they they're clearly they're just they're deep feels like they can kind of do whatever they want on the mound for the most part i mean they just they struggled this weekend hitting their zone hitting their spots you know but uh, you know, I think they're going to be all right. I, I, again, that was on the road. It's not ever. It's listen, especially against a ranked SEC opponent, when their fans are absolutely feeling it. You got Kentucky. Don't forget, you still have Kentucky. You still have Kentucky in base in baseball. You talk about feeling like. Uh, well, th that's certainly going to be a little bit of revenge for Kentucky fans. I mean, I get it. That'll be an interesting baseball game for sure. All right. Again, want to say thank you guys. We're not we got more to talk about. We still got recruiting. We got the transfer portal to talk about here in just a minute. Uh shout out to Patreon supporters. You guys help make this thing. You help keep us afloat. And I do appreciate you. And welcome in our new sponsor, Insurance Max. They are the newest sponsor. They offer business, personal, life, and health insurance, retirement. We've got you covered. Their link is provided for you in the description box. If you have any questions, feel free to hit them up. We've got Wes Brown in chat. He runs the thing. So shout out to Wes Brown and Insurance Max. Transplant in Texas, uh, a Texan says, let's give Tuss Talk a like. I appreciate that. Yeah, make sure you hit the like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe. Kentucky fans, we don't like having all five stars every year, so let's, let's get the coach that can't recruit five stars. I listen, I yeah, maybe Pelfrey, maybe that is the better. You got you hired Coach Pell. I don't know. Christian Holt says Woo Pig Suey, let's go. Let's go, baby. What is next on our agenda? We got Cruton. Football Cruton update. How about Arkansas getting a commit today? Six foot one, two hundred pound linebacker, Jaden Shelton. He's a top 
50 linebacker in the well, depending on where you look. He's 53 on 247 composite, 67 on 247. So he's like a top 60, top 70 linebacker. Uh, recruited by Travis Williams. He's a top 80, top 85 player in the state of Texas. He has offers from Baylor, SMU, and TCU, among some others. We know, and we're going to get to the portal talk here in just a minute, but we know that they're going to go after some more linebackers. Now, he's obviously from high school. It's not going to, it's not going to do anything for you this year, but he's at South Oak Cliff High School out of Dallas, Texas, part of the 2025 class. Again, he's about 6'1", 200 pounds. It's a pretty good get. That's going to put Arkansas, that gives them four hard commits, along with Evan Knoll, the kicker, Grayson Wilson, who I believe got his fourth star over on Rivals, 247, not yet, 6'3", 205-pound quarterback. And then uh, Marklin Batten, running back out of Atlanta, Texas. These are all three stars according to 247. I believe that's according to their 247 composite. Grayson Wilson, of course, committed last year, around actually a year ago today, Grayson Wilson did. And then you had uh, Jaden Shelton commit. I feel like, and I say this every year, you're going to start to hear more buzz around May, and then you're going to get a pretty good idea on visits in the month of June. So once again, I think June, July is going to be a very commit-heavy part of the off season. It's going to be very commit heavy in, in May, June, and in July. So those are going to be three crucial high school recruiting months. I, I hear you guys on recruiting. Like it feels like who cares anymore? I think it still matters because you do still get guys that, that do stick around. <laughs> Although you know, the Arkansas just had a uh, high school commit, a former high school commit who signed on, played, and then he hit the portal or is rumored to be hitting the portal this week along with another player who's a former transfer. And, again, we're going to get to that in a second. Some of these kids do stick around. And I'm, I do believe in some of the talk that there's, there's going to be – the portal's about to get a shift. There's about to be a change in the portal. And I think it's going to happen within the next – I'm going to say within the next three to five years. I, I hope we just – you know, I don't know how exactly they go about it without just completely going back to what it was where you could still transfer, but you had to sit out a little while, right? You had to sit out a season. I don't know that they would go back to that formula or not, but I think something's going to happen. Now, we know NIL change is coming. I mean, you're starting to get politics involved with it. You know, when you've got millionaires and billionaires that are uh, <laughs> helping out in the portal through NIL, it's going to rub some folks the wrong way, and, you know, there's going to be some Dudley do-right politicians who are going to want to intervene. There's talks of player unions forming within the next few years, similar to what the NFL has. So I do think we're going to see some changes, and maybe that'll help clamp down on uh, on these kids transferring after just after a single year. After a single year, you're going to transfer. I, I'm still, man. It's like if we don't have success now, we're out. Like if we're not, if I'm not happy, if I fall back to second or third team, despite being a true sophomore, then I'm going to transfer out. I mean, I'm also a fan of, of – well, I shouldn't say I'm a fan. But I do understand a player wanting to get the most out of their name, right? And I understand if there's another school, maybe a P5 school, where you feel like you've got a shot at being the guy. I, I understand that. But the, the old days of, of a player having to wait, you know, wait his turn, those days are gone until they do something about uh, NIL and the transfer portal. I think one way you could solve it, I've been talking about this now for like two years, maybe longer, short-term contracts. Yeah, I mean, how, how else can you do it, right, legally? How else can you do it? You sign them to short-term deals. If they're, if they're under the age of 18, you have a parent or guardian sign off on the deal. I think that's how we, we help kind of slow this thing down a little bit. You sign them to a two, three-year deal, whatever it is. You Maybe they get a piece of the NIL, whatever it is, right? Or the NIL is separate and the schools are paying them. That's something separate. Uh, Shane says NCAA is the new NFL. Well, no, it's not because the NFL actually has regulations. They actually have caps. They actually have things that keep them in place, right? You're also talking about 32 NFL teams versus 132 college football teams. So, no, it's not the NFL. It's the wild, wild west. And I, I would say it's 
It's far more unruly than the NFL. It, it's far more unruly. There are no rules. It is – you're not happy somewhere, then just leave. And there's no contracts holding them in place. You know, there's nothing holding them back other than maybe NIL deals. Now, you know, I, I – no, I'm not going to get into the whole transparency discussion again, but uh, my alarm to remind me about Muss's radio show just went off. <laughs> uh, some college players making more than NFL minimum, right? What is the NFL minimum? It's 200, is it 200000 for uh, scouts or whatever? Ty, would you be interested in Miles Slusher returning to the Hill? He is transferring from CU. I mean, it doesn't really matter what I think on that. I mean, sure, of course I would. But does it happen? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be up for it. Why not? Yo, what's up, Brian? How you doing, man? How's it going? Uh, Let's see, scrolling down. Could help depth at linebacker well again I, if you're talking about the freshman or the uh, kid that just committed he won't obviously be here until next spring so he he's gonna have to be a part of another another uh he's gonna be he's a part of the 2025 class so he won't be here for a while so yeah that puts arkansas talking about his commitment 59th in the country remember how they handle how they handle transfers with this upcoming class with this upcoming year and how they handle scholarship distribution i'm sorry but rankings no longer really mean as much like they once did because you've got schools that are there that are going to go 15 high school and then the rest they'll make up within the portal so high school rankings and what you do there just they aren't the same like they were five years ago you know, like someone's going to overreact to, oh, well, we're just now 59th in the country, according to 247. That doesn't matter like it once did. It just doesn't. You know, now if you do end up in the top 20, now don't get it twisted. Yes, if you end up in the top 20, that's a really good recruiting class, especially if you're doing it with just 16, 17 players. Maybe I think Arkansas, what they signed, was it 19 this last class, something, something like that. And, yeah, if you end up with the top 20 class and you end up doing really good in the portal – you're building that that motto that we use here often, which is hope, or at least you're hopefully doing this. You're building quality depth, and if you're, you know, at least at least on paper, right? We don't know if it actually. We know it doesn't always translate onto the field. So, but I wouldn't look. What I'm saying is, I wouldn't look at this 59th in the country and, and overreact. We're not even in May, June yet. We're not to that point. Again, May, June, July are the three are three big months for high school recruiting because that's typically, you know, you get your visits in June and then you start seeing your commits happen mid to late June into July. You know, I think we've gotten into a bit of a um, cycle, especially, you know, I, I was telling you guys, well, June's going to be a heavy commit month. And then it doesn't until the end of June into July. That's kind of been the, the theme lately. And it's shifted because of, the transfer portal, right? It's it's shifted because, you know, they're they're weighing what they're doing in high school in terms of, of scholarship distribution versus what they think they may need to do out of immediate help, which is the transfer portal. The transfer portal has completely I mean, it's just taken over, you know. And and it sucks for JUCO players. I don't even know what that is anymore. What's a JUCO player? Like, you know, they're completely out of the picture. I mean it's it's shifted. They're the recruiting of those guys so much, you know, it's crazy. Let's just go back to hundred dollar handshakes and leave it well, <laughs> leave well enough alone. Says John Hawes, might be onto something there. I don't know. Uh, colleges need GMs and actual contractual rules, and I agree with that, Wes. Yeah, that's that is the biggest difference between the NFL and college. And technically, we're amateur in college, right? 99 problems, but a, but, a, but a Z not one, says Shane Yerby. Yerby. Today it's all about make your kids. Today it's all about make your kids' name or make your money. I can't hate on kids trying to make their way. I can't either. And, I, and you won't catch me. You know, I, I do. You will. I am a little bit uh, curious as to whether those type of kids exist any longer. The kids that like are patient and wait their turn at one school but I feel like that's more rare I feel like that's just 
that's just not as common, at least not for the guys you expect to be something big, especially the four stars. I think a lot of recruits we are after are are waiting to see what happens this football season. We start winning, commits will start flowing, says uh, Eagle. That is our Discord. That's our Discord admin right there. Yeah, and that's also true, and that's that's a part of it. That that's the other factor, right? Which is, what are we doing? What's going to happen? Is Pittman going to survive the season? And we've talked about that the last couple of live shows. And I've talked about that on Mark Rogers. I was on Mark Rogers' show just recently where I kind of – I think I, I think that was the show where I said, uh, you know, that we're waiting to see just like whether or not Pittman can survive going to Oklahoma State, you know, getting off to a fast start against UAPB and looking good against them. You don't want to look bad against them. And then what you do against Oklahoma State. Um, and then obviously the month of, you know, it, it, it doesn't get easier before November, right? It gets, it's, it's very tough. You've got four or five games. You got a stretch of about four games that could make or break what happens to Sam Pittman. And so those players are probably waiting on that. Their parents aren't parents and coaches are not dumb. They know what's happening over here. They know that a lot of the rhetoric is that from fans that, Pittman is likely to not survive. I think if I were to put a poll out right now on the Tusk Talk with Ty community page, and if I put that Pittman was out or if Pittman would survive or not, I think most of you would say no. Not all of you. I think it might actually be a pretty competitive poll, but I feel like the majority of people would say probably not. Uh, I'm cooking supper. That's why I'm quiet, but I'm still here. Philip, I, I, thank you. I appreciate you, man. Uh would it be fair to say that before the current NIL, student athletes got more uh, overall out of their four to five years in in terms of life in general? I, Steven, I don't know. That's a question to ask a player who was there. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe that'd be a really good question for a player who played during that time. But I think that these kids that bounce around, I don't know that they're all getting. I don't know that they're all getting paid. I don't know how. I don't know what's going on with that. Did you guys hear? Uh, who was who was it that went on Instagram, said he didn't get paid? Former Razorback Blo- was it Blocker, who made the claim he didn't get paid. Now that is the first I've heard of a basketball player. That's the first I've heard that. But he says it on Instagram. I saw the video someone posted on Twitter. I don't know if it got taken down. That's crazy. I don't know that I believe it. But if it's true, then what? If if that is true, then you kind of understand why that someone like that might transfer. Uh, yeah, I think seven wins is the magic number. Six plus bowl win or seven wins, bowl loss. I don't know. It wasn't battle. It was it was it was blocker, was it not? Was it was it not blocker that said that or was it battle? I don't think it was battle. If we don't beat UAPB fifty plus fifty plus to zero, then I won't be happy, says Brian Frazier. <laughs> Uh, you better, you better knock them out and people in Little Rock, I hope you show up. I'm just saying portal season part two is upon us. Great segue. Isaiah Agustave. Remember I used to say that and it would make people mad. Agustave. He's one of my favorite gets out of that, out of that class. Augustive. Per Twitter, he intends in uh, on hopping into the transfer portal. And so now, third slash fourth string quarterback Jacoby Criswell is rumored to be heading out. Jacoby Criswell is rumored to be heading out. That would leave Arkansas with approximately three scholarship quarterbacks. Taylor Green, K.J. Jackson, and Malachi Singleton. So, um, again, it's it's not really – it's not a shocker, right? And, and if I'm not mistaken, he has just the one year. Um, he's He's got to go somewhere and get an opportunity. I don't know – I don't know P5-wise where he could end up, but he does strike me as someone who could end up at a UCA, uh, maybe one of the northernmost Louisiana schools. Uh, I, I – 
maybe what is Tulsa's situation looking like at quarterback? I I don't know, but I feel like he's going to stay within the region. Maybe he tries a school in Texas. I don't know, but I don't see him going too far away from the South. I think he ends up at one of these schools. He could end up somewhere as, as far west as Texas, maybe. Not UT, but I mean a school in Texas. But it's not super surprising that Criswell is in the portal. Yeah, I mean, technically he is a fifth-year senior. 6'1", 232 pounds out of Moralton. I, I think his mechanics. I mean, I saw him throw some just – he he's got it. He's got the ability, arm talent wise. I think he's got it within him to be a pretty, pretty good quarterback somewhere. And I don't say that about a lot of players. Usually, I just won't say anything about it. Right now, I don't. I don't. I try not to talk bad about players, um, even if he is a fifth year senior. But I will say, I, I saw him make some really nice throws. Not just this year in spring camp, but I saw him. In practice last year and, and later on in spring camp last year and fall camp, saw him make some really good throws. He has the ability, right? And he can take off and run. He could do he could do a lot of things, you know, but he's still kind of limited in some areas, and I don't know that he ever just fully grasped what was what Petrino was looking for. If you want my honest opinion, I thought KJ Jackson, I'm not saying he completely passed him by. But it certainly felt like he was either with Criswell or maybe a little bit ahead of him. Um, KJ Jackson, a little bit different, you know. Comp- well, really, he's 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 you know he's a left-handed, six-four, maybe six-five. He looks closer to six-five if you want my opinion. But we'll say six-four, about two hundred twenty-five pounds. Can take off and run. He doesn't have jets. Okay, he's not Taylor Green. You know, when he runs, sometimes he kind of reminds me of KJ Jefferson a little bit, but. Not as a physical runner, because obviously we haven't seen that, but just kind of the way he takes off and runs. It just kind of reminds me a little bit of of, uh, K.J. Jefferson. But Jackson has a a different set of weapons, and being a left-handed quarterback is also pretty cool. You know Petrino's loving that. Again, you feel like K.J. Jackson is trending upwards while – and Malachi trending upwards while Criswell was trending downwards. I don't know that he ever fully recovered through spring camp. You know, at times we'd see him run with the twos. It was like, okay, well, maybe he's there's a battle here. We got a battle between him and Malachi. And then he was right back with the threes or he was behind K.J. Jackson. So, again, not completely surprising. He's got one year of eligibility left. He's got to go somewhere. We all wish him the best. I know you guys do. I do. Uh, I'd love to see him go somewhere and just be a, I don't know, just a fantastic, great quarterback, putting up numbers, doing the doing the thing, being great. Would love to see that, but there was no shot he was going to take the job away from Taylor Green. And the more I watched, the more I thought if he does compete for the ones, if and I thought this by about week three in, in spring camp, so this is practice like, what, two, four, so maybe practice six or so. If I was thinking to myself, and I was talking to a, to someone, a cameraman that was there, I said, you know, I kind of think if if – because this is right around the time Criswell started getting reps with the twos and working his way up. And I, and I was thinking to myself, if he competes for the one, for the, for the starting job, we might be in trouble at quarterback. And I don't mean that as a diss on Criswell. It was just that it seemed to me like Taylor Green was just a full step ahead of everybody else. You know, he was just a full step ahead. I mean, he looks primed and ready to go, if I'm being honest. I don't know how much of that will translate onto the field this fall. But, uh, yeah, and, I, and I, I definitely never thought that that was going to be the case. It was a good thing that Green was so far ahead compared to that of uh, Criswell and, and Malachi. And listen, Malachi, over the course of the next couple of weeks, I thought passed. I thought he passed Criswell. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Isaiah, Jacoby are both good players. They just didn't jump out in the spring game. Well, they didn't jump out in the spring game and, and – you know, Isaiah had some good runs in camp. There, there was, there was one, uh, there was, there was one whole week where I remember thinking, like, man, he might actually be the starter. Like, there was one solid two, and again, that's just two days worth of practice. So I say one week; it's just two days of practice. Tuesdays and Thursdays is what we got to see. Um, 
I remember thinking, like, man, this dude might actually compete to be a starter. And then after about that, he just kind of slowly, you just he just didn't look the part, you know. I don't know. And then you saw him fall back on, on the depth chart. Uh, Red Wolves 2015 with a five dollar super chat. I appreciate you guys in the super chats. I like Taylor Green as our starting quarterback. He looks really good, and the offensive line looked much better. I was really happy to see the offensive line not give up a ton of pressures. Again, I understand it's against the twos. I understand that Green, I think, was sacked once. He had a couple of other pressures. I mean, but it's it's you know that's bound to happen. You're not gonna you're not gonna be perfect. And we don't know how much of that was really on the offensive line or, you know, maybe just a defensive player making a hell of a play. Uh, I stand by what I said Saturday in the post scrimmage, which was I'm a little bit concerned about about the twos on defense. I'm a little bit concerned about the twos and threes on the offensive line, if I'm being perfectly honest, outside of maybe Tykes Crawford, who worked with the twos. But, yeah, I hate Augusta left. Augustave. I hate that he left. He was our fastest back. He was quick. But uh, Jackson looks the part. Russell's coming along. Russell really got better and better and better through camp. Um, I kind of wondered sometimes if he was uh, – you could tell he, he got gassed. There were, early on in spring camp, he got gassed a little bit. You know, you could tell he was just covered in sweat, huffing and puffing, you know, you could tell he was really, you know, he was lagging a little bit. And then the conditioning got better for him, you know, as as uh, spring camp went on. I, I would be I'm, – I'm very fascinated to see how the running back, what that depth chart looks like coming out of fall camp for sure. Um, while in prison, I don't get much time to listen, says uh, Chris Weiss. What? <laughs> Big Pin, what's going on, man? OG Ty, that's right, baby. I'm here. I'm here. And I'm loving it. Thank you guys for being here. Again, make sure you like, share, hit the subscribe button. Major, major shout out to our newest sponsor, Insurance Max. Link is provided for you down below. Go check them out. They offer business insurance, personal life and health insurance, retirement. They do it all. That's Insurance Max. You can hit up their link. It is provided for you down below in the description box. And they are in our Discord as well, alongside Direct Service Overhead, the garage door company. Same-day services, quality parts, and affordable outcomes. Give them a call or check out their links, again, that are also provided for you down below. Russell needs to lose 20 pounds, says steve I, I I like the way he runs with that strength, with that power. I liked it a lot. I like the way he runs. Um, he's got he's got the burst. I mean, there have been some goal line situations that I watched where he clearly pushed the pile. I say clearly, you had to be like right there to see it. But yeah, there was a, it was the I think it was the first open to the public scrimmage that they had that first Saturday, and he had a couple of carries on third and short and on goal line situations. He's got he's got those tree trunk legs, man. I mean, he's just he's got it. Um, Ty, you need a co-host. You don't think I'm doing okay on my own? Steve-O, that feels like a jab, bro. I've been doing this on my own for a while. I think I've done a pretty good job. I don't know, 1.3 million views. I, I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. Same reason we can't get offense and defense at the same time in any sport. We have bad luck. What? Oh, you're responding to Charles, I think. Uh, <laughs> Charles says, Ty, why is it hard for Arkansas baseball to get great pitching and hitting at the same time? I feel A&M and Kentucky might have an edge in close games. Those are going to be very interesting games, aren't they? You got Kentucky, you're playing you're playing at Kentucky. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> well, I don't know. You You tell me. I've done the solo act for quite a while. I do like doing call-in shows, though, when you guys call. I love those. Those are some of my favorite things to do. Um, I just want to hear you argue with <laughs> Oh, my God. Is my wife in chat? <laughs> oh, man. Tusky6693 says that's because they were behind the backup O-line in the spring game. 
You, okay, again, you must be responding to somebody. I don't know what you're talking about. So, yeah, Jacoby Criswell, Agastave, the running back, Isaiah, both looks like they're going to end up in the portal. So what does that do for Arkansas that gives them right now well, – I say right now. Let's say they both announce tomorrow, okay, we're in the portal. Bing, bang, boom, we're in. I don't know if they're officially in yet. So until it's officially official, right, we can't say how many scholarships they actually have. But let's say they do, that gives you a whopping seven scholarships to work with. That's assuming nobody else leaves. I'm hoping, I know Sam said something about a veteran linebacker. I hope he can go out and look for a couple of more. I hope old John Tyson and the, and, and the Hunt family and Jerry Jones and uh, hell, I don't care. Get get Slim's Chickens, man. Their 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 home base is based out of Fayetteville. Their very first store is in Fayetteville. What about Flying Burrito, huh? What? Come on, everyone, get involved. Come on, come on, get involved. Throw some money into the pot. Let's help football out. They're gonna have some options. Make sure you guys are in Patreon. We're going to be covering the uh, the portal in, in the football in, in football for Patreon. You can only see those rooms, by the way, if you're a Patreon supporter. You can you can get into to uh, Discord for free, where you'll have access to main chat, the nerd chat, some other stuff. You can get it on the predictions, which give you XP. That's all for that's all fr- freezies. That's all for freezies. But if you want to get in on the conversation that's that's revolving around football, sometimes we've got some really good insider stuff. I'm giving you well, I gave I gave Patreon supporters spring football reaction on Patreon videos um, that I didn't do here that were only on Patreon, right? So you got to be a Patreon supporter to get in on those. And oh yeah, by the way, you'll have a shot. This is just like a little extra thing. You'll have a shot at uh at Alex Collins. I don't know where that card's at right now. Oh, it's right here. Here it is. You have a shot at one of these cards. Huh? There's the autograph. You got to be legendary status to get in on that Alex Collins. Joe Ferguson, former Arkansas player, and of course, Ken Hamlin, former Arkansas player. So all kinds of reasons to get in on Patreon. You're going to want to be a part of it. It's awesome. We have a good time. Those guys uh, keep the conversation flowing in that Patreon chat. Hopefully the curse of Bobby Petrino has been broken. Ah. I guess we'll see. Need linebacker, D line, O line depth with these with these last spots. Maybe a safety as well. Yeah, I think you're right, and I think they still need. I think they feel pretty comfortable with with uh, maybe six or seven guys to rotate on the offensive line. I think that's what Petrino had said. Because of that, I think you you want to feel pretty good too deep at each position. On, uh, along the line of scrimmage, and I don't think they're there yet on the offensive line. I'm still concerned about the interior depth of the defensive line and uh, linebacker. Linebacker is a concern for me. I, I like a couple of guys there. I'm not saying they're horrific. I'm not saying that nobody's going to be able to to really push or contribute, but the ceiling of that linebacker room right now behind the ones is a little bit like – Oh boy, are these guys going to actually push? Are they, if they're asked to step up for whatever reason, how confident do you feel in those guys being able to do so, you know, on a, on a uh, consistent basis, if they're asked to do so, I don't know. And I think because of that, yeah, they need to go out and try and find, assuming they're available, assuming you can do it with NIL or whatever, they need to go after some of these guys in the portal, these older veterans that played in the SEC and, and not just because they're veterans either, but because they, they, they're also capable, right? Not just that they're veterans, but that they're capable. You want to do what? What, what, what? What's the thing that matters, right? Quality depth matters. That's our logo. That's our, our slogan, I should say. Quality depth matters. That's the slogan. Print the stickers. Make the T-shirts. Quality depth matters. That's right. Armstrong is top dog right now. Armstrong is uh, get to. I met him, seen him in practice a bunch, but I finally got to meet him at uh, walk-ons on Friday night on Weddington. Hoping the best for him. He's gonna be. I think he's gonna be good. And I, I think some of these receivers who weren't really giving it, given it much of an opportunity under Enos, they're gonna be given an opportunity under Petrino. I, I don't think there's much doubt there. Uh, Wes says I'm worried about wide receiver if Armstrong and Broden get hurt. 
Yeah, so you still got Centennial, right, who can line up in that slot, who can move around a little bit. He's mostly an inside guy, but they can line him out uh, outside in the boundary if they want to. I don't know what to make of Tesla just yet. I don't know how much of last year. I really thought he struggled getting open last year. And you started – it really – it was pretty obvious in, in camp as well. I thought this year he struggled getting open. But he still made some nice grabs because that's what he does. He makes highlight grabs in practice. I'd love to see that on the field. I think he's capable. I think he's more of a solid check down target, shorter route guy, you know, like a crossing route, a short hitch route, comeback route. Like that's kind of his thing. I don't know that you're going to see him run very many goes and fades downfield. He's not going to burn a lot of people off the line of scrimmage. But uh, he's also pretty tough after the catch. Um, I, so, other than that, yeah, and, and who was it? Who broke the wrist? Was it Dasman James? Someone broke the wrist on Saturday. I think it was Dasman. There's still – yeah, there's a lot of questions behind those guys. I don't think you're wrong. Uh, and I'm not saying that because you're, you're a new sponsor. I think you're, pro- I think you're right uh, because you do wonder what, what happens behind those guys because a lot of those other younger guys did not – stand out in spring very much cj brown kind of looks the part you know we'll see about him we got a long ways to go we'll see what they do like i said once you get these two guys assuming they're both entering the portal talking about Criswell and uh the running back out of florida assuming they both hit the portal that gives you seven spots who knows who else leaves i do believe there's going to be more i don't know how many I'll just say I think there's going to be more. That's all I could say right now. So I think there's a possibility there that it's going to be beyond seven. We'll see what they do with it and uh, how they utilize these these uh, these scholarships and what they have left, how they distribute them, right? Did we cover everything? By golly, I think we did, man. We covered it all, baby. What a show. One thousandth show. Thank you to Eagle for pointing that out, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, we are going to have to do a Discord XP giveaway. We are, aren't we? We're going to have to do one. We're going to have to do – maybe tonight. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Shout out to uh, Patreon supporters, all 101 of you. That's another thing that's tough to build, and here you guys are. I know some of you are free right now. You're not getting all the inside stuff yet. Consider signing up. for It's $4 a month. Four bucks, and you get the insider stuff. You get the stuff in Patreon Discord, right? You get to see all the, all the stuff behind the – behind the curtain so why not check that out again we are at 101 patreon members at the moment awesome so awesome to see that of course shout out to you guys shout out to the uh, super chats and of course our newest sponsor insurance max they uh are very very thrilled and honored to have them a part of this uh, again i met wes over the weekend had a blast didn't get a chance to talk with him a whole lot just a little bit uh, but it was really cool seeing all the Woo Pig guys. I know they took some video. I'm not photogenic. I'd probably take up a lot of the photos because, you know, being tall and fat, being a big Sasquatch, you tend to take up. Just You guys know I'm not photogenic. But, uh, yeah, so, again, do do myself and Wes a favor. Go check out that link that's provided for you. Again, uh, business – or, uh, excuse me, Insurance Max, they offer personal insurance, life and health insurance, business retirement they've got it all get uh get free quotes right there on their website that is provided for you so all right that's it i appreciate you guys also like share and subscribe if you're new here and i'll see you guys later on in the week until then be good behave all that stuff all right we'll see you